In today's video, I'll show you how to create six easy wireframe shapes using Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so the first shape we're gonna create is the sphere. And to create this, simply select the ellipse tool and then drag an ellipse onto the artboard. Switch the solid fill over to a stroke fill and we'll just use the color white to make it more visible. Select the direct selection tool and then drag a selection over the left anchor point and then simply hit the delete key on the keyboard to remove it. While the shape is selected, go to effect 3d materials and then revolve from the 3d materials panel you can leave everything as their default settings the only setting that we're really interested in is this one in the top right hand corner and if we select the lead little arrow you'll see there's an option at the very very top or a wireframe so if we check that and then select a render what that does is it will render the shape as a black wireframe and then from there we can change the preset rotation maybe to something like oh symmetric top and then that will change the rotation of the shape once you're happy with the rotation of the shape just go to object expand appearance and then that will turn the wireframe shape into editable paths and from there you can change the color to whatever you want so i'll just again reset the color white and if you wanted to you could change the thickness of the stroke to whatever you want the second shape we're going to create is the cylinder and starting off with an ellipse similar to the sphere only this time i'm just going to click anywhere within the artboard and I'm going to create an ellipse which is 200 pixels by 200 pixels and then I'm going to select the rectangle tool and then I'm going to again click anywhere on the artboard and create a rectangle which is of equal width and height and then I'm going to vertically and horizontally center both shapes on top of each other starting with the square select the scissors tool which is shortcut C on the keyboard and then you just want to select the top left and bottom left anchor points hit the delete Delete key twice and then using the direct selection tool select the far left anchor point on the ellipse and again hit the delete key and then using the direct selection tool again select the two far left anchor points on the square and we just want to move these in line with the ends of the ellipse make a selection around both shapes and then within the 3d materials panel select the revolve option and then go to the far right hand corner select that little arrow and check wireframe and then click render and what you can see is the cylinder with a sphere in the middle and what we want to do is select the semicircle and then under the object tab where it says offset direction from change that to the right edge and if you follow the steps correctly everything should be all lined up and now we just want to select both shapes go to object expand appearance and then while everything's still selected go to object group if you want to change the rotation of the cylinder select one of the shapes and then come down to the rotation section and you can can either use one of the presets or you can use your own custom rotation i'm going to use the isometric top and then i'm going to select the second shape and then change that to isometric top select both shapes and then go to object expand appearance and then while everything's still selected go to object group and then we can change the color to white and just resize that down to however big you want it the third shape we're going to create is the torus or if you want to refer to it as a donut shape you can do select the ellipse tool and I'm just going to create a small ellipse and then I'm going to go straight over to the 3D materials panel and I'm going to select the revolve option again and as you can see it already turns into a big fat donut in the top right hand corner select that little arrow and select wireframe and then click render and then to adjust the size of the torus you want to use the offset option so the higher the amount the bigger the torus will be and then we can also come down to the rotation and simply select one of the preset rotations or you could use a custom rotation once you're happy with the way it looks go to object expand appearance and then i'm just going to flip that to the white color and that's the torus done the fourth shape we're going to create is the diamond and for this we start off with a simple square rotate the square 45 degrees select the direct selection tool and select the far left anchor point then hit the delete key and then we want to select the top and bottom anchor points and then just move those in towards the right hand side select the whole path and then head to the 3d materials path Panel and then select the revolve option make sure the wireframe option is selected and then select render go down to the rotation section and again change the rotation to whatever you want 
I'm just going to use a custom rotation, munch happy, object, expand appearance, and then just change that color to whatever color you want it to be. The fifth shape we're gonna create is this vortex type shape. And to create this, we need to select the polar grid tool. And if you click and hold your mouse button over the line segment tool, you should see it at the bottom. And you can either drag the shape out straight away, or if you just click anywhere within the artboard, you can specify the dividers within the polar grid and now I'm just going to stick with the default settings make sure the polar grid shape is selected and then we want to go to object envelope distort and then make with mesh and then within the envelope mesh options we've got rows and columns you want to make sure that those are even numbers and because we are using even numbers we essentially get a grid of four which means we get that little center point in the middle if we was to use a set of odd numbers we wouldn't be able to place an anchor point in the middle so as a rule of thumb just make sure that you're using even numbers and then select the direct selection tool and then you just want to select the middle anchor point of the mesh and click and then you can move and drag that to wherever you want it to be For the sixth and final shape we're going to be creating this 3d landscape and to do this we need to start off with the rectangle grid tool so under the line segment tool menu above where we selected the polar grid you should see rectangle that grid tool and what we want to do is just drag out a grid holding down the shift key to keep it square while the shape is still selected we want to select the free transform tool which is shortcut e on the keyboard then using the bottom option we just want to change the perspective of the grid once you're happy with the perspective we need to go to object envelope distort and then make with mesh and for this one we can change the rows and columns to something like like eight which will just give us enough anchor points to play with to create the 3d geometry and then using the direct selection tool what we want to do is select the individual anchor points and simply manipulate them by moving them up down left right to create a 3d landscape if you wanted to make the grid more detailed when you start off with the grid tool you can increase the number of vertical horizontal dividers and that will give you more square to play with. And that's how to create six easy wireframe shapes using Adobe Illustrator. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, be sure to check out some of my other videos. Until next time, I'll see you all in the next one.